What's up everybody, this is Cecil Alexander with Jazz Lesson Videos, and today we're going to be diving into three different styles of jazz improvisation and increasing difficulty. We have melodic improv, bebop improv, and post-bop improv. And if you would want to dive a little bit deeper into any of these styles of improvisation, you can feel free to check out my latest course with Jazz Lesson Videos, Jazz Guitar Improvisation. So in this course, we have an in-depth study of uh, the various techniques that are associated with all of these improvisation styles. In our study of melodic improv, we're going to be checking out uh, how to use the parent scales in your improvisation, which would be um, the major scale and its modes, uh, melodic minor and harmonic minor. We're also going to check out how to use the diatonic seventh chord arpeggios as well as their respective triads. Uh, and we're also going to have a uh, helpful pattern for you to use to navigate through uh, the different scales. In our study of bebop improvisation, we're going to be diving deep into the use of chromatic approaches and enclosures, uh, bebop scales, the major and the dominant bebop scale, uh, as well as uh, how to decorate arpeggios using the pivot concept um, and using some simple melodic cells to create longer lines. In our study of post-bop improvisation, we'll be diving deep into some advanced harmonic concepts, including harmonic superimposition, as well as the use of symmetrical scales and um, pentatonic scale applications. If you're interested in uh, in-depth analysis of all these concepts and their applications, feel free to click the link below uh, to access the course. And you can also use the coupon code CECIL25 for an additional $25 off. So let's uh, take a look at some of these concepts from the course, starting with melodic improv. So in this first part of the course, we're gonna be going over some fundamental jazz exercises. We're gonna start with the modes of the major scale, melodic minor scale, and harmonic minor scale. So let's get started. So starting with uh, the modes of the major scale in C major, uh, we're going to have C Ionian as our first mode. This mode will typically work over a major seven chord. Our second mode is going to be D Dorian. The characteristic of note of this scale is going to be the natural six and the minor third, uh, which gives us that characteristic Dorian sound. Uh, and this will typically work over a minor seven chord or a minor six chord. Our third mode will be E Phrygian. E Phrygian will work over E minor seven as a three minor seven chord, uh, or in a more modal context, um, this uh, sus flat nine sound, so E sus flat nine. Our fourth mode will be F Lydian, which will work over F major seven or F major seven sharp 11. Uh, and then our fifth mode will be G Mixolydian. To work over G7. Then we have A uh, Aeolian, which will work over A minor 7. And then finally we have B Locrian, which will work over B minor 7 flat 5. So now I'll demonstrate playing all of these modes one after the other. So in this section, we're going to be taking a look at three very common jazz standards that you can use to apply some of these concepts from uh, the first section to. So next up, we have the tune um, Tenor Madness by Sonny Rollins. Uh, here's me playing through the melody of the tune um, with the backing track. <laughs> So now 
that you have the melody of the tune in your ears, let's go through the chord changes of this tune. This is going to be a B-flat blues, um, so we're going to start off with our 1-7 chord, B-flat 7. Uh, then their second measure, we're going to move up to um, the 4-7 chord, which is E-flat 7. Next, we move back down to B-flat 7, and then usually uh, this is characteristic of a jazz blues. You have this 2-5 that's going to lead into the 4 chord, or more specifically, 5 minor 7, 5-7 seven to 4, into 4-7. Four, uh, and then in a lot of versions of this, you'll have um, in the sixth measure an E diminished seventh chord, which will lead back to our B flat seven chord. And then we'll usually have a uh, three minor seven into the five seven of two, which will lead into our two minor seven for one measure, five seven for one measure, and then our turnaround progression, which will be one, five seven of two, two, five. Uh, or in some cases, 3 minor 7, 5 7 of 2, 2 minor 7, 5 7. So uh, next up, here's me soloing over the changes of B-flat blues. Um, try to keep an ear out for some of those concepts from the previous section. So in this next section, we're going to be going over some bebop exercises. Um, bebop is a subgenre of jazz that was popularized by people like Bud Powell, Charlie Parker, and Dizzy Gillespie. And it's usually characterized by fast tempos, fast moving chord changes. Uh, and improvisationally speaking, we have a lot of um, scalar runs, um, specifically descending scalar runs, uh, ascending use of arpeggios. Uh, as well as the use of chromatic approaches and enclosures. So next up we have the chromatic enclosure, which again is going to be an important part of um, creating bebop lines. Uh, it's going to allow you to get from point A to point B really uh, easily, but it's also going to put a lot of non-scale tones on strong beats typically, which uh, just kind of adds some extra harmonic interest to the line. So this particular chromatic enclosure um, is going to start a scale tone below our target note. So if we have C, we're going to start um, on B natural, leap up a third, and then we have that uh, non-scale tone falling on a strong beat back to um, a scale tone below, and then finally our target. Um, and then moving that through the scale, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, so if we move into an approach, or sorry, an enclosure into D, we start again a scale tone below, and we're going to have half step um, below, scale tone above, half step above, back to a half step below, and then finally into our target. So, so if you move it through the scale, it's really just those first two notes that you have to um, watch out for. The last two notes are usually just going to be chromatic, um, either from below or from above. So moving into E, moving into F, moving into A, then to B, and then finally back into C. So here's how it sounds playing through all of those approaches as a quick exercise. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So here's a quick exercise that's going to connect uh, this chromatic enclosure to the major bebop scales and the um, dominant bebop scales on C. So in this next section, we're going to be diving into post-bop, which is another subgenre of jazz um, that kind of arose in the 1960s. Uh, and this subgenre is going to be characterized by its use of non-functional harmony um, while still retaining uh, that blues characteristic that's present in hard bop and bebop. And also the use of uncommon chords, uh, such as major 7 sharp 11 chords and major 7 sharp 5 chords, and sort of borrowing from um, the modes. Um, so you'll remember in our first section we were talking about um, using the Phrygian scale over a sus flat 9 chord. That sus flat 9 chord is very present in a lot of uh, post-bop compositions. Um, some famous post-bop composers include uh, people like Joe Henderson, um, some eras of John Coltrane's compositional style, uh, as well as Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, and a little bit later, we have Cedar Walton. Um, so let's dive into some exercises. So first up, we have the 1256 melodic cell. And you'll remember from a couple sections ago, we had our 1235. Uh, this is a pretty similar idea. Um, so if you're in the key of C, C major, uh, one, two, five, six would be uh, C, the one, D, the two, G, the five, and then A, the six. Uh, and again, this is a little bit more of an uh, intervallic idea. You have a fourth within there, um, and it's going to give you kind of an intervallic sound when you're uh, putting it into your, your longer line. So if you take this cell and move it through the scale, um, again, you could kind of be thinking of this as corresponding to each of the major scale modes. So you'd have one, two, five, six on C, one, two, five, six on uh, D, one flat two, five flat six on E, one, two, five, six on F, same on G, one, two, five flat six on A, and then on um, B, you'd have one flat two, flat five, flat six, and then back to one, five, uh, one two, five, six on C. Uh, and again, you can think of uh, sort of superimposing those on top of different chords to get more interesting sounds. So uh, when we were talking about the one, two, three, five, I used the example of playing that C one, two, three, five against an F major seven chord. Do the same with this one, two, five, six cell, which against that F bass would give you five, six, nine, and three. Let's dive into an exercise now where I'm using that um, one, two, five, six through the entire C major scale. So up next we have um, an exercise where I'm going to be using the one, two, five, six, but this time moving around in minor thirds. 
Um, the minor third uh, transposition, I'd say, is really popular in post-bop, uh, something kind of popularized by John Coltrane, his co compositional style. But if you look uh, at his improvisational style in his later years, he's using this minor third transposition to get some very outside, very contemporary sounds. Um, so let's take a look at this exercise. <laughs> So up next we have that one, two, five, six moving around in major thirds. Uh, so if we start with C as our bass, we have the one, two, five, six on C, then on E, then on A flat, and we move that through uh, two octaves. So exercise is gonna sound like this. In this final section, we're going to be taking a look at how to apply some of those concepts from the previous section over a couple different post-bop standards. So first up, we have Inner Urge by Joe Henderson. Uh, this one has a pretty tricky melody, so here's me playing through it so you can get it in your ears. <laughs> So let's try breaking down the harmony to inner urge. Uh, this one's going to be using quite a bit of non-functional harmony, meaning that it doesn't really fit in a very clear key center, um, but we'll analyze the chords nonetheless. So we start off with F sharp minor seven flat five, moving down a half step into F major seven flat five. Uh, and this is a really popular chord in Joe Henderson's compositional style. Um, this major seven sharp 11, as well as the major seven sharp five chord, you'll see all over his tunes. So then we move uh, down a whole step to E flat major seven sharp 11, down another whole step to D flat major seven sharp 11. So for the second half of the tune or the B section, we start with E major seven sharp 11, down a minor third to C sharp major seven sharp 11, and then up a half step to D major seven sharp 11, and then down a minor third to B major seven sharp 11. So uh, you'll notice this sort of root motion kind of creating a melody by itself. And then after that, we continue that pattern. So after B, we move to um, C major seven sharp 11, down a minor third to A major seven sharp 11, up another half step, and instead of going to um, B flat major seven sharp 11, we have B flat dominant seven sharp 11, and then down a minor third to G major seven sharp 11. And that sort of creates this uh, half step root motion to go back to the top of the tune um, to F sharp minor seven flat five. So up next is a uh, quick clip of me just soloing through the tune using some of the concepts from our previous section. <laughs> Thank you. 
So if you're interested in diving deeper into these concepts and styles of jazz improvisation, feel free to check out my course with Jazz Listen videos, Jazz Guitar Improvisation. And again, you can use the coupon code CECIL25 for an additional $25 off. I'll see you next time.